mentally, I'm stronger than you. You know, physically, you might have more than me, but mentally, I've, I've endured more. I, I have the mental capability to w- to withstand this adversity that that we're both are going to face in this race, in this life, or whatever the situation it is. And the only way I could get to this point is going through adversity, trials, and tribulations. Like if my life was all cupcakes and sweet, <laughs> then <laughs> that I would have nothing to to fight for. I would. All right, everyone, welcome to I Feel Like Buddha. If you're joining us, my friend, this is because you have a vision. You have a vision for your life, not as it is, but how it could be. And our goal is to help you to gain the skills from the simple to the seemingly impossible. And the guests that we yeah. bring on are the people that I truly believe have the insight and knowledge to help you convert your ideas into concrete reality. And that's transform. And which is what this podcast is really about, which brings me to my next guest today. My guest today is a two-time world record order in athletics, is an Olympic, is an eight-time medalist and a motivational speaker. He has been interviewed by Tom Bilyeu on Impact Theory. Several videos has been made on his speeches on Gold Coast. And if you don't know Gold Coast, it is the tech talk for motivational speeches. Okay, that's just how inspiring this man is. I would like to welcome Blake Lipa to I Feel Like Buddha. Blake, welcome. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. I love the introduction. I'm just going to like take you on the road with me and like for all my races, just like have you just like announce <laughs> 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 me. I, I, I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Yeah, man. I'd like to thank you for. Let, uh, for joining us on Happy Like Buddha and for allowing us to be a part of your journey. Um, so everyone, today we're going to be talking about achieving the impossible because, Blake, you are a man that has done the seemingly impossible. You are one of the fastest men yeah. in running, but you were born with no legs. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, are you a believer in the law of attraction? <laughs> Oh, absolutely. You know, it's crazy. Like you just, you know, just stated like, look, you're one of the fastest men in the world and you was born without legs. And even though I know that, even though I'm living it, it still makes you smile. Like when I hear it, it still makes me laugh. Um, it still makes me happy when I hear somebody else say it because because it's it is the impossible. You think you go back to the day that I was born and, you know, in August 31st, 1989, almost, you know, 30 years ago. You know, this this is late 80s. The doctors, the conversation with my parents was like, look, Blake is not going to walk. Um, he's not going to be able to run. He's going to be bound in a wheelchair his whole life. Um, you guys might want to find activities. That's not only easier for him, but for you as well, because you don't want to take him through all, you know, take him mm. through all the sports and, and being picked last and, and not being nominated and not getting playing time. All those things that, you know, statistically speaking, was my life. And they and they wrote me off um, from day one. But but I tell people with with my family members, you know, my mother and my father they made a, a decision at an early or at my early age. Said, look, this is going to be tough. This is going to be hard. My mom was a nurse, so she kind of she knew okay. she understand the mindset that it would take to have a disabled child to live a successful life. And the first thing they decided to do was, you know, we're going to sit together as a family, as a unit, right? Through the good and the bad and the ugly you know, they made a decision that they're going to be in the corner fighting for me and, and with me. And, and the second thing, which which saved my life, was they, they kept a positive attitude towards the whole situation. That's really and, and, and the power of positivity can, like, God, it can save your life. It really can save your life. I mean, that's really amazing, man. You know, um, just my mother as well is actually also a nurse. So I just had to throw that in there, you know. Like, I have something in common with Blake Lipa. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know what you like you know what i love right is it like is the fact that you guys stay positive and and you know while I, before this interview i actually did some research into you and i saw one of the videos that you made which which you actually said to which you actually said that you saw oscar pistorius running and you just yes. had this thought and you had this desire because i think at that point you were already pretty pretty nimble you were playing basketball and everything and you as and then you set your vision on the fact that you want to be that fast you want to be that's that's what i wanted like you you have to understand i I was like 
in college, coming home from like a chemist organic chemistry class. I was on the college diet. I was eating like a bowl of Fruit Loops, like a bowl of cereal. And, and I'm watching ESPN. And at the time, I've never even ran track and field. I didn't even know what – I knew what track and field was. But to say there's track and field for somebody like me or that somebody like me could run competitively was even a thought. I was there for the basketball highlights. I love I love American basketball. So I was mm. there to see what, you know, D. Wade at the time, like D. Wade and LeBron was going to do for the tonight's game. Then they did they did the top ten. And once they did the type 10, they highlighted Pistorius back in 2008. And I'll never forget, he took a gold medal in the bird's nest, Beijing bird nest, 2008 Paralympic Games in 100 meters, 200 meters, and 400 meters. 400 and he meters. had a, yeah, in the 400 meters. And, and, and ESPN was like, number eight, this is number five, number six, Oscar Pistorius in South Africa takes three goals. First time, you know, a Paralympian ever, ever done this. And, you know, for me, that was the first time that ESPN has really highlighted anybody with a disability like that you know with the with something you know instead of the sad you know the sad story or you know he's missing his legs let's let's, let's donate <laughs> you know it was like no this guy is missing his legs and he's and he's rocking it right now he's doing amazing look how amazing he made our top 10 and like my jaw dropped i dropped my like i was so excited i dropped my bowl of cereal i was like wow <laughs> and i think that ninety thousand people you know i took away that moment it was ninety thousand people cheering for uh, uh, eight disabled men, right, off their feet. And out of those 90,000 people, ESPN thought it was important enough to, to, to record it and highlight it and, and let everybody know in America about it. It blew my mind. I was like, wow, there, there's something out there for me. Why, I, maybe I can do something. Maybe, maybe I do have the talents. I am, you know, I, I was born like this, and I started doing my research about Oscar, and I started realizing that I was, he had a congenital birth defect. You know, I had a congenital birth defect. You know, he played rugby. I played basketball. But, you know, but later on when he was like a teenager, he got his running blades and switched over from mm. rugby to, 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 to track. And I was like, bingo. That's exactly what I want to do. And it wasn't a moment. And I tell people, like, when you see something, it wasn't a moment like, oh, wow, that was cool. You know, I, there's no way I could do that. But that, that was really fascinating. You got to have that moment. My moment was, oh, wow, that was amazing. I could do that, too, as well. If you, even though I've never ran a day in my life, even though I've never ran track and field ever in my life, when I seen it, something inside of me was 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 tugged. But something like my my inner spirit was being tugged at, like like this is what this is what you're meant for. This is what you mean. This is what you need to do. And I'm like talking mm. to myself, like I never that's, ran before. What are you talking about? But that desire was was speaking to me. The the universe was lining up. For that moment, that right, that right time for, for those frequencies of vibrations to talk to me said, this is what you're meant to do. So it was just like, a, it just opened up my, you know, my world. And that was in, you know, 2008 going into 2009. So by 2011, less than two years, I was competing alongside Pistorius at world championships in, in the finals in 100 meters, 200 meters. And, and then by 2012, I actually tied his world record. Um, in the in the hundred meters, uh, and this all happened in three years, right? Mm. From from going on my on my couch watching, watching you know yeah. Oscar run mm -hmm. to three years later getting blades, training, making the teams, traveling to in, in twenty twelve, and I'll never forget. It was in twenty twelve. It was at two hundred meter finals. It was at the London. Uh, it was at the London Olympic Stadium, and this was you know prior to or this is uh, post. Oscar's Olympic run. So he went to the Olympics, ran in the Olympics, came and ran in the Paralympics. When they called his name out in the pair that Paralympic race, that 200 meter race that I was in with him, they said Oscar Pistorius. All 85,000 people took a moment and stood up and just like gave him a round of applause. Right? It was it was one of the most electrifying, memorable, like craziest moments I've ever been a part of. I've never even I never even felt that type of energy before but it was just like it got it gave me chills the way collectively the crowd the world was applauding him and thanking him for his efforts of qualifying for the olympic games and doing yes. something that they, they never thought was was possible mm -hmm. and i say that because being part of that moment even though it wasn't about me i got to feel that energy right i got to feel that that moment i got to feel i got to feel what it feels like even though it had nothing to do with me I got to feel it and be able to touch it, be able to feel that energy, be able to feel that moment really, really inspired me. Like I, I go, I went on that race, took a bronze. I had a bad, you know what I mean? I didn't have the best race and life went on. And of course, Oscar went on 
in the situation that he's in now. But I think about that moment and I think about how special that was, how non-disabled people, um, white people, black people, you know, you know, Asian people, all different uh, creeds, religions, races, all came together to acknowledge the fact that Oscar did something special in that moment. And a lot of people was inspired by that. And, and being part of that moment, I took that and I implanted that in my, in my head and in my heart. And, and, it, and it's been a, a, a driving factor um, for me to get back on that stage, um, to get back in that same situation, that same scenario, but they're not gonna be applauding for Oscar. Um, they're gonna be applauding for, for me. Absolutely. And now you're actually in, in a position now where you are now being, you are now the inspiration for a whole lot of other people that seemingly want to do what people would assume would be an impossible task for them to do. And I, and I applaud you for that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, Thank man. You. Yeah. You know, today I wrote a quote, right? I actually, actually didn't write this. I saw this on Twitter and then I um, put it down as a quote. And the quote was, sometimes what didn't work out for you really worked out for you. Okay. <sighs> <laughs> that's the truth. That is that. That oh, man. I, I'm a, I'm a true, you know. I'm a true believer. You know. You know. I tell people my adversity um, is my advantage. Um, the, you know the fact. You know. I the, I remember the you mentioned the earlier in the in the um, in the introdu introduction. I had an interview with Tom Bayou, and I remember at the end of the uh, end of our interview, in the interview with him. Few. This is years years back. This is before I broke any any world records. Uh, this is before I even was the, you know the one of the fastest men in the world. I was still running like. 46, 47 <laughs> at the time. And I was on his couch like, Tom, I'm going to be the fastest man in the world. Just wait. And, you know, he, he was he was digging it. He was getting it. But people, some people were like, dude, you're like, I was three seconds off from where I was at at the time. But I, I was serious when I said I want to be the fastest man in the world. But we get to the end of the interview and he asked me, he said, Blake, do you ever wish that, you know, you was born with your legs? You know, do you ever wish you like, never had to go through this? That you just lived a normal life, and I, you know, I took a step back, and I was trying to think of something like amazing, and I really couldn't. The only thing I could come up with was like, no, I don't. Um, I don't wish I was born with legs. And, and to take it a step further, I'm actually thankful that I'm born missing both of my legs, uh, because as an adult and as an athlete, as an Olympic athlete, I realized my adversity is 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 my advantage. Um, the fact that I was born less than, um, the fact that I had a fight from day one, from a the time I was a baby, when I came out the womb. You know, they ripped me off, said, Blake, you, you, you have no legs. You want to struggle. And, and I did struggle. I had hard times, but I got through those hard times. And then by getting through those hard times, it built me up, you know, built my character up. It built my mentality up. It made me just a stronger person going through hardship and enduring those hardship and getting through those hardships. So now and as an adult and as an Olympian, the, 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 the hardships, the ups and downs that I go through now I have, I've, I've learned things through my past being born without legs. So when I'm at practice or, I, or I'm racing one of the fastest men in the world, I can look at them and say, mentally, I'm stronger than you. You know, physically, you might have more than me, but mentally, I've, I've endured more. I, I have the mental capability to, to withstand this adversity that, that we're both are going to face in this race, in this life, or whatever the situation it is. And the only way I could get to this point is going through adversity, trials and tribulations like if my life was all cupcakes and sweet then, <laughs> then i would have nothing to to fight for i would have nothing to overcome but the fact that i was born less than and the fact that i had to had to build up and fight the fact that i was born without legs is my advantage so i tell people like whatever you're facing today whatever adversity that you're facing accept it like whatever challenge you're going to have tomorrow embrace it like be almost be excited for it because it's gonna it goes, it's gonna mold you, it's gonna shape you, it's gonna prepare you for the, the the biggest mission, your next mission. That's absolutely I totally agree with that. You know, tell me something, right? Um with regards to achieving success, what advice would you give to your younger self? Because personally and from a lot of um some old some old friends of mine as well when young people especially in the 20s start to achieve a kind of level of success what happens is we often quit 
we often do something not so smart to just yeah. mess things <laughs> up. <laughs> oh, so I stop. I've been there. I know you've been there. You know, I have. if I you have. had to, if you had to give a younger person in their twenties right now that is that is achieving um, and they are and they are getting what they're working hard for. What advice would you give them mm-hmm. for them to be able to maintain that and not mess that and not mess that up? Yeah, it's a couple of things, but you know, one thing that that I, I I would tell you you need to identify is is the is that fine. There's a fine line of, of having confidence and believing in your talents, but still humbling yourself to be able to show up every day, right? Because you gotta you gotta have that confidence like you're the best in the world, right? But you gotta train like you're the worst in the world. <laughs> so how do you how do you and, and everybody's different you know my 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 line is different than your line right you know what i mean that, those conversations that you have with yourself are different so that's that's that work that you have to do internally um that's the work you have to do with reading and writing and talking things out and identifying that that internal work to say okay if i say this to myself this will give me confidence if i do this to myself or say this to myself this will humble me enough to be able to show up and train like I'm the best in the world. You know what I mean? But the mindset is I gotta, I gotta train like I'm the worst in the world, but I gotta treat myself like I'm the best in the world. Like that's that's that that's that fine line where you gotta tiptoe a little bit and, and where the best, like you know, the rest in peace of the Kobe Bryants and the, the LeBron James, you know what I mean? Like, for example, you look at somebody like LeBron James, who is arguably, you know, one of the best basketball players in the world, but he trains like he's ranked the, the 300th in the NBA, right? But when as soon as the season's over, he takes a couple of days off, he's back in the gym. How do you convince somebody who knows they're the best in the world to show up, to, to be the first in the gym and to be the last in the gym? And, and, and it's just that conversation with yourself to saying, how bad do you want it? Not comparing yourself. Stop comparing yourself to other people. Stop comparing yourself to other times. Stop comparing yourself to, to your competitors. You want to be the best version of yourself, period. That's it. When you can lock it in and say, I want to, I'm going to, I'm going to work on myself. You know, focus on myself. Don't worry about the, my, you know, for me, if I'm in the track, don't worry about the guy in my, my, my left lane. Don't worry about the guy in my right lane. Just worry about my lane. And, and, and then in this race of life or in this race and track, I'm going to execute and I, I want to be intentional. And I want to give everything I can get, I got in this moment so I can be the bit, my best version of myself in this moment. Now, it's, it's a day-by-day process, um, so having patience, consistency is, is, is truly important. And, 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 the, and the big thing, when I tell people, and, and like when I went through you know, my struggles, I had some ups and downs, um, really, really ask yourself constantly, what is your why? I'm like, why are you doing this, right? And, and when, when you ask yourself your why, make, I, I, got, I encourage people to, 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 to dig deep. Don't, you know what I mean? Don't make your why because you want a nice car or you want to, you know, you want a big house. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? You want you, you know, you know, why are you doing it? Cause I want some more money in my bank account, right? No, like make it, make it meaningful to where if all those things were taken away, right? Say you wake up one day and they took away your house, took away the car that you worked for, right? Took away the money in your bank account. Will your why still have value to your goals? And, and, and for example, you know, my why is, you know, I think about the disabled child in, in, in South Africa or, or here in America that's missing their legs and needs some hope and inspiration, who, who needs to see me run at the Olympic Games because they was discriminated against. And they see me run and I tell them I was discriminated against. And if I can do it, you can too. So get up, get out and go live your life. Like, like that, that's my why. I think about when I won my medals um, in 2012 uh, in London. And I was went to go meet my family and my, and my granddad who flew flew over to London from America. And it's his first flight he's ever taken at 70 years old. And as I'm showing my medals to him, he's just like crying like a two-year-old baby. And that was the first time I've ever seen him cry in 70 years. And, and I think about moments like that. And that becomes my why. Like make your why so meaningful that every day you wake up, you're excited. Make your why so meaningful that every day you wake up, you're like, okay, got some sleep in i gotta get to work you know what i mean that make your why so strong and so powerful that if they try to strip you from from worldly things that your why is so strong that you can still see the vision 
and still wake up and still go achieve those dreams. So I, I encourage the youth, especially at that age, because that the problem is at that age, it's hard to focus. We have we have so many distractions, right? We wanna mm -hmm. we wanna be over here. We wanna you know we wanna be over there. <laughs> we, wanna, we wanna be over here. We can't we can't we can't miss that. That's gonna be it's gonna be the party of the year. What do you mean? Like that's mm -hmm. gonna be the biggest. I gotta be there. But when you as the older you get, you realize how more important your why is or your talent is or your purpose is, and and and, and the sacrifice that it takes to, to 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 fill out your purpose. Let me get this right, right? You need to make your why something that is that is that is bigger than yourself that contributes to others other than yourself, because no one can actually take that away from you. Absolutely, yeah. And and, and I tell people that's one of the like when I'm doing a talk or or um, you know a speech or whatever, and somebody comes up to me at the end of the speech and and say, you know, Blake, I've been struggling. I thank you for your words, you know. And, and these are not my words. These, these I feel like these are God's words that that I do live through life that, you know, I'm, I'm a living example. So I'm just expressing my living example of life. And somebody comes up to me and says, Blake, thank you for your words. And, and I, it changed my life, changed my perspective, changed my perception. And I'm going to go from this point on and, and go fight, right? That's, I, I promise you, that's one of the greatest feelings um, in the world. It trumps being on TV. Um, it trumps, you know, when, because when you, when you're on TV and win medals and all this stuff, it's all, it's all about me. Hey, y'all, look at me. Look at me. Hey, you see me? You see me? Hey, I look good. Like it's such, it's such a, it's such an ego thing, right? Because it's all about me. But when you can take your, you step outside of yourself and stop worrying about yourself and just give back in the moment. It's it's something that something powerful comes that happens that's created when you when you when you step outside yourself and try to give back to the universe to give back to somebody else with without with any without expecting anything. Just do it. Because it's the right thing to do do it mm. because it because you're doing it out of love um mm. do it do it because because you, you've been called to do it absolutely absolutely your why your why is to inspire people am i right on that it is it is <laughs> my why is it is to inspire people it is i i and I'm, I'm flipping it on the head and that's the beautiful part was you know it's like we go back to the day i was born statistically speaking i should i should be in a wheelchair right now I should be at home. I should be collecting a disability check. I shouldn't be out here inspiring people. But I took my situation. I, I identified it, right? And then say, you know, I am born without legs. I do have an opportunity. Yes, it's going to be tough. But I do. If I, if I fight, I'll have an opportunity to inspire people. Now, I done took a, a negative situation and flipped it and, and, and turned it into a positive situation. So how many negative issues and situations that we're going through our lives that we're letting just the to beat us up and say, yes, it is negative. It has to go through that process, but it's up to us to flip it to, and to use it, to use it for our own good, to turn it into something positive. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, even though you, you have your why, you must have days that you just don't feel like going out and working out. And that takes me back to what you were saying that you need to train as if, as if you are you are, what's the word? As if you're not the best in the world. What, are, yes. like what, what do you tell yourself to one, to keep your humility? What do you have like any mantra and do you have any mantras or what do you tell yourself for you to also, to just keep going every single day? Cause you must train, eh, eh, eh. Yeah. I don't want to swear <laughs> a lot. <laughs> I do, I do, I do. I, I, I'm I, I, it, it's a mindset. Um, because you know, when I, when I'm training, uh, people think and assume that I'm training to, to, for the Olympics, right. Uh, or they, they assume that I'm training to break another world record or to win more medals. And, and that is a part of it, right? Like, don't get it, don't get it wrong. Like that is like, that is the goal. Of course, when we talk about plans and goals at the beginning of the year, you know, for, for me, it was Tokyo 2021, making the finals, running 43 seconds meddling at the Olympics, parallel, like all these things we write down and, and think about. But it's the feeling of being able to go out there. And, and you know, as a, as a prior athlete, you know, when you go out there and, and nobody's out there, it's just you and your coach and a couple of your teammates, and you have 300s or 400s or 500s. And, you know, I'm on the, the fourth one out of, out of six or seven, and my body is completely shut down. 
and I have to do the mental strength mm. of talking myself into the next one and then the next one and I'm I'm completely dead and then finish with the, the, the last one, my best one. That feeling when I get done and I knew that my body couldn't do it, but I pushed myself mentally is one of the greatest feelings in the world. Can nobody take that away from me? It's out there. I put that good energy out there. I conquered that workout. I, conquered, I, I mentally took over my mind and my body and I, and I finished what I started. That's the feeling that, that that's what gets me excited for training every day. Now, don't get it twisted. <laughs> There's some days when my body's hurting, my, my legs are hurting, my stumps are sore, right? Um, I'm bleeding. Um, I can't even, like, there's some days I wake up and I put my legs on and I can barely walk to the bathroom, right? Just to even brush my teeth, let alone try to get to the track, um, and, 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 and to run. Like I'm in, I'm in pain, like I'm, I'm mm. in physical pain. Um, but, but what I do, what I've learned so like situations like that, because in my head, I'm like, ah, oh, I can't even walk to the bathroom. How, how in the hell am I going to get to the track to run 300s? And it's not about that right now. It's about just getting up, right? Get the blood flowing. I, I might go get some ice, take it once, ice my leg one step at a time. After I ice my leg, it, it's numb a little bit. Now I get up, I can move a little bit. I get the blood flowing. I get, I get some movement and I get to the bathroom and I keep the ice again. Like I, it's, it's, I, I bring it back. You know what I mean? Bring it back and just go one moment at a time. Not even one step at a time, one moment at a time. And as, as I'm going one moment at a time, I'm identifying that I'm not in a good place right now, right? We all like to neglect and say, oh, I, I'm feeling bad, but it's okay, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get out of it. I'm going to get out. I'm happy. I'm happy. I'm happy. If you're not in a good place, if you're not happy, identify that. Recognize it, right? Live in it. It's okay. It's okay. We're always not going to be happy. I've learned that trying to fight, trying to get out, out of that depression sometimes or trying to fight out that feeling, you're actually working yourself even more because you're, you're beating yourself up because you're like, oh, I'm feeling bad right now. I shouldn't be feeling like this. And you just keep going dig deeper and deeper and deeper. Go through that process, right? Just fight. Keep fighting. One step at a time. One step at a time, right? You're going to get better. You're going to get better by identifying it and doing the work. That's the issue that I feel like people kind of miss. They, mm. they want the happiness. They want they want the, the feel good feeling just to come to them. They just want it. They just want it to <laughs> just, <laughs> just let people be walking like and just smack them in the face like, oh, oh, thank you. I just feel I feel great. Like, no, you have to put the work in. Yes. You, got, you, got, you got to do your work. You got to do some reading. You got to do some writing. If it's some YouTube, is it a, if it's a YouTube show? If it's a podcast, like do your work and, and surround yourself with with like minded like people that 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 you can that you can see eye to eye with, and, and, and that brings you up because you know you're not in a good place right now. Like do your work. Like I have to do my work when I don't do my, and this is what I learned being born with that leg. If I don't do my work, my situation will succumb me, will overcome me. My situation will beat me up. If I just wake up and say, well, whatever happens to me, what happens, I'm not going to really focus on positivity. You know what I mean? I'm not really going to just kind of go down that hole. I'm not going to go to negative hole. I'm just going to just stay right neutral, right? And being neutral is, is a safe, safe place to be at, right? And But, mm. but by being neutral, my surroundings is going to beat me up, right? By being neutral, my surroundings is going to eat at me. The fact that I'm born without legs, the fact that I'm sore, the fact that it's hard for me, you know, to get to practice, the fact that I got to carry – two, three, or four different legs, and my legs are falling now on the way to practice. All these things will, will eat at me. But the second mm. I get up, I, I get to work. I do the work. What can I, what can I read right now? What can I, how can I boost myself up? What can, I, what can I watch that give me in the right headspace and the mindset to, to keep? So, so when something bad is thrown my way, I can, I can brush it off and, and mm. keep pushing forward because I'm, I'm now in the right mental space to be able to handle it because I know it's going to come my way, but no, some individuals, as you know, are naive to the situation. They say, ah, oh, that's it's fine. My life is it's, it's average. It's okay. It's whatever. Like, no, it's not. Um, you actually are getting blowback. You're just not recognizing it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Blake, thank you so much. You have dropped so much, so much knowledge. And, and, and I hope that anyone that was listening to this have as, you know, has insight into what it takes into achieving the impossible and before we actually go off can you tell us where our users can find you and you're active on social media and your website yeah so yeah so i'm, I'm I, you know my instagram I'm, I'm, i you guys want some good laughs go to my, <laughs> go, to my <laughs> go to my instagram i'm over here just laughing at myself legs are flying off 
You know I me. Mean? I got some basketball tricks, some runs. It's 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 Leapster, L E E P S T E R, um, and my website is Leaper dot run. Um, but I, honestly, like as as I love the following stuff, I tell people if if you really heard me, if you if you was really touched by some of the words that we spoke today, I just encourage you just to, just to, to 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 make today the new day. Um, for you to, to to switch your perception and perspective and change your life around. Make today the day I hope I can be a living example to say, yes, statistically speaking, I shouldn't be doing this. And statistically speaking, maybe you shouldn't be achieving your dreams, but but but, but I'm doing it. I'm, I'm one of the fastest men in the world and I was born without legs. So if I can do this, imagine what you can do with your life. So to, today's the day and we're, we're, going, we're, going, we're going to turn it around together. <laughs> Fantastic. That's it. Thank you.